and welcome to new video. Today we discuss more further about the inverse Laplace transform. In my previous lecture you saw how to solve the inverse Laplace transform with different different property differentiation, integration and all that thing. Now I increase this little bit more about partial fraction because many questions of the inverse Laplace transform we can easily solve with this partial fraction we cannot use any other property directly so inverse Laplace transforms questions are solving by many method whatever you click in the mind you can apply it partial fraction is very useful for solving these types of uh, transform what is partial fraction I just little bit memorize if you have this types of uh, fraction here so you can write it factor it a upon s plus 1 plus b upon s plus 2 next if you have whole square everywhere or anywhere whole square whole cube so how we write in the partial fraction a upon s plus 1 plus b upon s plus 1 whole square if cube then plus c upon s plus 1 whole cube and then next factor also if we have square here s square plus 4 then how we write a upon s plus 1 plus 4 is square bracket you write like this bs plus c upon s square plus 4 correct so this is the partial fraction now how we solve this inverse Laplace transform with the help of partial fraction we go further now take it separate it so fs is a upon s plus b upon s minus 1 plus cs plus d upon s square plus because there is s square so we have to write like this so what is this fs fs is s plus 4 upon s s minus 1 s square plus 4 now taking lcm when we take lcm this s s minus 1 s square plus 4 cancel out so what is remaining s plus 4 equal to a s minus 1 s square plus 4 plus b b s s square s square plus 4 plus c s into s s square s minus 1 plus d what is d s s minus 1 clear so we can get this equation with this equation we have to find out the values of a b c d what we consider here when we substitute these values we can separate it when we separate these factors we can easily take in the laplace transform that's very simple way so now substitute the value of s and you can find out or maybe equating the coefficient first i put s is equal to zero s is equal to 0. When I substitute s is equal to 0, this becomes 0, this 0, this 0. Only a gives the value. When we put s is equal to 0, then minus 1 and 4. So, minus 4a equal to 4. So, a gives minus of 1 here. Clear? Next, when we substitute s is equal to 1, next is put s is equal to 1. So when you substitute s is equal to 1, you see where is the s minus 1 factor? It goes 0. So s minus 1 here a, c and d. So only b gives value. If s is equal to 1, then 1, 1 and 1 plus 4, 5. 5b five is equal to 1 plus 4, 5. So 5b five is equal to 5 gives b is equal to 1. One. clear so a we have to find out a is equal to minus 1 b is equal to 1 next we go for c and d for c and d what we can say equating the coefficient of coefficient of s q now equating in right this side no s cube coefficient we can say 0 here this a gives s cube only 1 s cube so a then b gives plus 
only one B. Then C gives one C and D don't have S Q. So A plus B plus C. A have value minus one, B have plus one goes zero. So value of C is equal to zero. Next is we have to find out value of D. For D, we equating next equating coefficient of S square. Clear? When we equating coefficient of S square or we can say coefficient of S only. Then we coefficient of S because in C only S square also C omit. Coefficient of S is here 1 equal to S 4. So 4A plus 4B and C don't have coefficient of S, D is minus of D. So again A is minus 1, B is plus 1, cancel out 4 minus 4, 0. So D gives minus of 1. Clear? A is minus 1, B is 1, C is 0, D is minus of 1. I substitute here. A is minus 1, B is 1. C is 0 and D is minus 1. So I put minus here. C is 0. So now our factors are this. We have to take in inverse Laplace of each factor separately. It's very easy. What is Laplace inverse? La minus Laplace inverse of 1 by S plus Laplace inverse of 1 by S minus 1 minus Laplace inverse of 1 by S square plus 4. So this gives minus of 1. This gives e to the power minus e to the power t. Clear? Minus 2 sine of 2t. 1 by 2 of sine of 2t by 1 by a. So sine of 2t by 2. So that is the solution of inverse Laplace. Now if you use some other property you can find same solution. Always solution is the same. So many questions are we can solve with this uh, partial fraction. So I just discuss little bit about the partial fraction. Now we go for last part of this inverse Laplace transform, convolution theorem. So what is convolution? Convolution we already studied in Laplace transform also. So I just give one example. Convolution theorem is state. Convolution theorem is Laplace inverse of if we have two function f1s and f2s gives by integral 0 to t f1u f2 t minus u d clear so it is the convolution theorem if you want to see its proof you can find out in any book so we go for some examples Convolution theorem is very useful if we have product of like product we can break with the partial fraction. Sometimes if we have only two product we can easily one, one function is considered f1 as second function is considered f2 as we can find out ft. When we find out the ft we substitute here and find the integral we will solve that inverse Laplace. So now we apply this for example Laplace inverse of 1 upon s plus 2 s minus 1. If you want to solve this with partial fraction, definitely solve a by s plus 2 plus b by s minus 1 and find out the uh, value of a, b and take the Laplace transform. Next, if we solve with the convolution, so what is f1 s is Laplace inverse of 1 upon s plus 2. So this gives e to the power Correct e to the power minus 2t. Then f2s is equal to Laplace inverse of 1 upon s minus 1. So it gives e to the power t. Clear? Now we have f1 and f2. So apply this 0 to t fu e to the power minus 2u. Next e to the power t minus u. 